three men went to the dock. But the ferry they were waiting on needed some repairs, so they decided they'd go to the cafe and have some coffee and such. And so they, they went to the cafe, they drank, and they talked, and they just forgot about what they were doing. And, and suddenly they heard the engines roar, and they saw the boat pulling slowly away from the dock. They all got up, and they started running down the dock, and uh, right for that departing ferry, and two men jumped and landed squarely on the deck. The third man, who wasn't quite as fast as the other two, caught himself on one of the, the dock's pilings and, and began to laugh uncontrollably. A nearby fisherman said to him, You just missed your boat, son. The next one's not for six hours. What are you laughing at? You're right, the man said, trying to fight back laughter. I did just miss my ferry, but the reason why I'm laughing is because those two who caught my ferry were here just to see me off. Jesus didn't want Peter and the other disciples to, to miss the boat at this stage in the game. In John chapter 21, he introduced a new question. Do you love me? If the answer was yes, then the call was clear. Tend my sheep. In other words, then show it. The faith response for Jesus is never just words, it's, it's actions. The love of God through Jesus Christ does not just speak of love. It's de it demonstrates it. Jesus is calling the church to follow his lead and to act out of their love. In his first letter, John calls the church to love one another for for love is of God, whose love was manifest among us in that God sent his only Son. Notice that God's love was manifest not by the divine decree saying that he loves us, but God's love is demonstrated in that he sent his only Son that we might have life through him. If we love one another, God abides in us. Jesus asked Simon Peter, do you love me? And to those who along with Peter respond, yes, Jesus says, follow me. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. In John 21, Peter by his actions, was asking Jesus, now what? I spent three years living with you. Now that you're only here with us in spirit, what do I do? It seems that his confusion led him back to his old life. At the beginning of chapter 21, Peter says, out of the blue it seems, I'm going fishing which meant Peter was going back to his previous career as a fisherman, taking with him some of his disciples. We'll go with you, they said. Peter and the gang, they weren't just filling up the cooler with some beverages, buying some night crawlers at the local bait shop and going to sit on the bank for a quiet afternoon. No, they had the boat, the nets, the, and they were going back to practicing their trade. However, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the bank and called to them. And in this exchange, Jesus would answer the question that Peter and the disciples asked, Now what? When they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Then tend my sheep. Jesus defines the basis of the church's relationship, love. The church is not based on moral statutes, not on etiquette, not on theological or, or philosophical concepts, but on love. Love is the controlling force in the kingdom of God. Why did God design a world 
with its most basic element being love. Why did God create a world where the very core of existence is love? Because with love, there is inclusiveness. With love, there's endless forgiveness. Remember when Peter asked Jesus, how many times must I forgive my brother who sins against me? And Jesus said, 70 times seven. These, these are significant numbers that indicate perfect forgiveness. Seven is a perfect number in the Bible. Jesus was talking about a forgiveness that knows no limits. A forgiveness that went all the way to the cross to express itself, to, to reveal itself. A Sunday school teacher asked her class to, to draw a picture illustrating a Bible story. One paper was handed in, contained a picture of a big car, convertible. An old man with long whispers flapping in the breeze was driving. A man and a woman were in the back seat. Puzzled, the teacher asked little Jimmy, who drew the picture, uh, to explain his drawing. And, and Jimmy said, sure, sure. Why, that's God, and he's driving Adam and Eve out of the garden. Ever since Adam and Eve's sin separated us from God, God has been reaching out to us with forgiving hands, arms wide open. Every time Israel went chasing after another God, God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob chased after them with forgiveness on his mind, with arms wide open. And now the Son of God, Jesus the risen Savior is chasing Peter with arms wide open. Simon, son of John, do you love me? He asked him that three times. One for each of Peter's denial. Denials that he made that night at Jesus' arrest. Forgiveness full and complete. Tend my sheep. Peter, if you love me. And go out and do what I called you to do. No more fishing for fish. I made you a fisher of men. People, Peter. It's all about people. Love ever gives, forgives, outlives. Ever stands with open hands. And while it lives, it gives. For this is love's prerogative. To give and give and give. Now if God would have put say a moral statute as the core of life then what would become of forgiveness? Unforgiveness would not only be possible but it may have been preferable if someone broke that one rule. They did not adhere to the, the law of keep off the grass so they will be outcast. This is what the Pharisees of that day were doing when they elevated the law to a moral absolute, to the, to the basis of living. The result in, of the elevating of the law uh, to the core of life was that they wrote off over half of God's chosen people as sinners. If we put a moral statute or a law as the core of our lives, then, then we would be constantly placed in the role of ju judge and jury. We would either damn or exalt an individual based on that one principle. Vengeance is mine, all mine, you might say. But no, no, that's not what we are called to do. Simon, son of John, do you love this moral principle? Then judge between people. No, that's not it. That's, and it, it would be the same if we put a philosophical or theological concept, or any part of etiquette or anything else that we try to base life upon other than love. Only love allows the church to be the church, nothing else. Jesus recommissioned Simon Peter to be a fisher of men not a fish, and to lead 
the disciples, the followers of Jesus, the rest of God's chosen people, and ultimately the entire world to lead them back to God. That's what Jesus is called to Peter and is called the church was. We are all called, each one of us, to be world leaders. We are called to lead the world, to base its life on the only one true and solid foundation, love. Jesus says, Christian, do you love me more than these? Then prove it. Not, not to me, but to them. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep, feed my lambs. As the Father has sent me, even so, I send you. Jesus asks each one of us, each and every day, Christian, do you love me? Then follow me in Jesus' name. Amen.